If you want an outlandish prediction habits with two goals. Yes. <laughs> I will see thousands of philosophy students at Arsenal going, what is Havertz? Who is Havertz? Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chihan Kyung. And we have back for us for the first time this season, Lion City Sailors fan, Arsenal's fan, Eddie Hirono. Hey guys. Good. Ba- welcome back, Eddie. Just give us a reminder of what you do. With the, the Sailor Fan Talk? Um, so yeah, I run a website and um, YouTube, Instagram page and all that. Really just centered around Lion TV Sailor's content. Fan interviews, player interviews, player profiles, yeah. that kind of stuff. I love this fan interviews. I always, after I, I really gave them the interview, the fans, how they feel about the the match, you know, they always give good comments. It's, yeah, And quite humbling because when we had the festival of football, <laughs> lest we forget, yeah. in Singapore, Eddie was the man, and I've got to give you credit for this. You know, you saw everybody, myself included, I was with my daughter, all going to get the Spurs players or the Liverpool players. It was Spurs and LCS, wasn't it? Yes. There's Eddie, alone, trying to get the LCS players. (laughs) Everyone's going to Spurs... He's going to LCS. That's in the mix zone, right? Yeah, yeah. in the mix zone. Yeah, Fantastic no. stuff, Eddie. <laughs> they, they didn't, they didn't uh, uh, disgrace themselves, no? Yeah. Put LCS up a good fantastic. Yeah, They're fantastic. the highlights of the tournament. Yeah, to me, well, I said that in the column. Yeah. Fantastic. Speaking of highlights, yeah. segue. Segue again. Speaking of highlights, <laughs> we've got another special deal from our friends. Starhub. At Starhub. Yeah. You know, they're our sponsors. And then we have been talking about the great deal, the one-year free broadband deal. Uh, you sign up for the Premier Plus package now, you get one year free broadband. What a good deal, right? But it's coming to an end soon, so you better go and sign up if you haven't done so. Enjoy the deal. So, one year? One year. Are you sure that's right? One year free broadband. One year. F- I, I hate my contract. I hate my existing contract. <laughs> if you could change your contract, Please. now's the time Now's the time to, to do, do so. it. Now's the time to Good do stuff. It. All right, speaking of maybe not so good stuff, this week was the week of international oh. football. And if you had any trouble sleeping this week, <laughs> all you had to do was watch Gareth Southgate's England again. What did yeah. you make of it? Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, boring stuff. La. It always is. To yeah. me, it always is. I mean, they start off so, you know, like, passing around aimlessly, no penetration, and then and then uh, Ukraine suddenly scored, and then they just woke them up a bit, and then yeah. finally, the Kyle Walker score, score equalized, and, you know, and then it sunk, sinks back into some very dull affair. So, you know, sometimes you're like wondering, what, uh, what are they playing? Why are they playing this? Why are we watching this game? You know? mm. What do you think, Eddie? <laughs> I think it's way too conservative. Yeah, you know, the, the players that you have, it, it, it's it's not a coincidence. I think that when Foden and Saka play for their club sides, it's so dynamic and so exciting. You can say about uh, Bellingham, you can Bellingham say about Declan well. Rice also. Harry Kane, I mean, he does drop deep for Spurs last time in the mm. past, but it's very different, you know. And this one, I mean, he did create the equaliser, mm. but it's he got so little of the ball as well yeah. in, in, in dangerous spaces. And you know with Kane in the box, it's like one touch, one kill, but... Did he really get any chances? No, not, no, not really. Yeah. So, and not anymore, by the way. He doesn't drop deep anymore by Munich. Mm. It's been well documented. Mm. They're like, we signed a number nine. Yeah. Yeah. Play number nine. Yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. expect exactly. to drop back. No, I agree with both of you guys. I think the major difference between Gareth Southgate and the rest is very simple. As you mentioned, if you look at Jude Bellingham at Real Madrid, they're building the side around him, mm. right? Because he's a once-in-a-generation attacking midfielder. Then at Arsenal... They're doing the same with Declan Rice, yep. right? Because he's a once-in-a-generation defensive midfielder. Right. Gareth Southgate has got both. He has both, <laughs> and he's building the side around and Harry Maguire. I mean, <laughs> okay, that's a bit too much, but still. <laughs> it tells you everything you want to know. But I mean, seriously now, Harry Maguire, oh, okay, why is whatever you say about Harry Maguire, he has done a job for him in the past. And there is a slight shortage of centre-backs at the moment. I don't agree, by the way. Mm. I'm just Mm. playing both sides. Jordan (laughs) Henderson is the one that's truly mystifying. Mm. Once you drop down into a lesser league, whether it's MLS, Asia, Australian League, or in this case, the Middle East, you're semi-retired. And that's fine. You've gone for the money. Even Beckham, once he went to the US, he was kind of done. He shouldn't be being picked no. for England anymore. Yeah. No. And he was struggling in the match. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I totally agree with you. I mean, we have England d- does have a, a wealth of talents that are that are waiting in the wings. You know, um, you can easily you, you can easily put Saka in in the in the midfield, or you can put 
uh, who else? Rashford, whoever, you know, to support uh, yeah. Harry Kane. So many great players, Foden and Greenish when he's uh, fit. When yeah. He's fit yeah? Yeah. So, so I really don't see how he continues to put Henderson or or even Maguire or yeah, th- those two are the I think the biggest kind of uh, culprits. Yeah. Yeah, I think Maguire is a mystifying one for me. Now, mm. I, I don't agree with a lot of the critics who said that yeah. he was at fault for, no. for Ukraine's goal. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, and Ukraine is a very good team. I think a lot of the criticism centered around England forgets that as well. But, you know, I, I think there are other centre backs in England who continue to get like overlooked. Yeah, Lewis Dung. There's, there's Tomori. Yeah. Tomori and AC Milan. Apparently, yeah. in Italy, yeah. the Italian media cannot Stop believe Hogwarts, that yeah. this guy is not being picked. Yeah. And apparently, the stat I read was he's got as many Serie A titles won as he does England caps. Which is oh, absurd, absurd, right? Yeah. I mean, absurd. So I agree with you. Sorry, you were saying. Yeah, and Ben White as well. I think he doesn't get a look yeah. in as well. So I, I think that's where the frustration lies. If England wants to keep the ball a bit more with all these like generational talents that they have Saka, Bellingham, Rice. Why are they using Maguire who is more of a traditional centre-back? Yeah. I, I, and I don't hate Maguire. I think he's an alright player. That's the key point you make. It's not about whether he plays well or not. He's slow. He's, yeah. he's one-paced. He belongs to a different correct, era. Correct. As yeah. I wrote in the piece mm. which you can read on, on Yahoo. He's not the, the, the centre-back that's required now, which is more of a quarterback, John Stones, Trent Alexander-Arnold type who steps out of defence. So what you see is, you see him instinctively pulling back because he knows he hasn't got the pace, which pulls Rice back, which pulls Bellingham back, which pulls Henderson back, who doesn't go forward anyway yeah. because he isn't that kind of player. And as you said, Kane is isolated, Saka's not involved. You've got this ridiculous situation, and it is ridiculous that, Look, I think you can make the case that England has the best front six in world football. Oh, that's British hyperbole. It really isn't. Even if you look at France, even if you look at France, right? You've got Kane up front. You mentioned Kane, Saka, Bellingham, Rashford, Rice, Rashford, Grealish, Foden. It's extraordinary. All right, you could do France, Mbappe, Griezmann's getting older, Giroud is getting older. It, it's not quite consistent. Yep. Yep. You don't need to pick two essentially holding midfielders in Rice and Henderson yeah. in front of Maguire with that front six. And he's never going to change. Mm. Southgate's never going to change. So do you think he's going to stay on until Euro 2024? Or? He'll stay on. Yeah. I think I, I, South, But I do think Southgate goes after Euro 2024. Yeah. Win, or lose. Win or lose. If he wins, he goes out on a high. If he yeah. loses, that's the end. Right. He's got to get to the latter stages of this tournament. Yeah, he, I know I, I, it's hard to win a trophy and every player, every manager says it is extraordinarily hard. You need luck, injuries, decisions and so yeah. on. But with that yeah. squad, that talent, yeah, it's extraordinary to me. Which will bring us to the next point. The other traditional powerhouses are yeah. struggling right now. Germany, yeah. Yeah. what a defeat by 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 Japan. Yeah, 4-1 defeat, even though it's a friendly mm. and by that cost, cost Hansi Flick his job already. Yeah. Yeah. Italy also like, one one with North Macedonia also in trouble, yeah. so that you know you can you can make a case that England are way ab- above these two teams, and then maybe France and Spain may be a bit difficult. We'll, we'll be challenging them for honors hmm. for Euros, but I can't see other other teams trying to. Uh, no, as you say, yeah. it's only really if you're talking about Euros, it's only really Spain and France. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Germany's all over the place. Oh. You know, I read a stat. I didn't know this. Did you know this? He's the first so, manager ever to be sacked since yeah. the post was created yeah. in the 1920s. Germany has never sacked a manager before. Well, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. I can see why they <laughs> sacked him because yeah. he's got that same erratic, slightly reckless approach that he had at Bayern Munich. Yeah. But he doesn't have Bayern Munich's players, yeah. so he, he can't quite do it. They're all over the place, tactically, uh, defensively. They're all over the place, Germany. Yeah, and you know there there's a lot of analysis now coming up. Why why Germany is like they are, nine years ago they were champions, yeah. but now now it's like they are they they were out very early in the World Cup twice twice group stages and now twice. now as hosts of the Euros and now they are lost three in a row, lost three friendly match in a row. That's cost Hansi Flick his job, hmm. and, mm-hmm. and it's also it's a bit about the talent. You know the the talents are maybe not as good as the, those yeah, that they've, they've lost their golden from, generation. Yeah, the golden yeah. generation has, has gone. So now the talents, but also the the structure where they you know mm. they don't know how they don't have a proper striker in front. They don't have a number nine. Harry Kane will be 
absolutely ideal for them, but they don't have him. <laughs> and then so so the, the the forwards are all trying to, and and the, the forwards they are not that good as before. So they even they couldn't penetrate and they couldn't score goals. And then everything goes short and right 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 from right from there onwards. So. I mean, it, it is on the mess. I think mm-hmm. Germany. So, yeah. But also, I think big credit to Japan, right? I think oh. everyone wrote them off yeah. and said the two oh. one was a bit of a fluke. Well, they just went and smacked them for one. <laughs> and this time it was definitely like without a doubt, it's not a fluke at, at all. And I think it's testament to Japan's grassroots system mm. and the fact that they send them out early to Europe yep. to and Europe. a lot of the lower leagues I mean not lower leagues but the more uh, minor leagues like the yeah. Belgian Pro League and everything yeah. and it's all coming together now. and even the German league like like, yes. well, like, like Liverpool's now Endo now, yes. now he used yeah. to play he took up for yeah so Endo, so, yeah. so this this loss for them actually was ironically ironically made in Germany yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah I couldn't agree more are you listening to Singapore that's the way to do it <laughs> the Japanese way but we'll get to that later in part two alright quick word on Italy they're a strange team. Yeah. European champions. Yes, yeah, exactly. Missed two World Cups, I think, right? Yes, they certainly two. missed two World Cups. Mancini goes for the Saudi Petro dollars. They got Spalletti in there. Okay, he did well at uh, Napoli. Napoli. I think he won yeah. the title there. So I, I don't see them in the same level of crisis as Germany. I mean, I mean, Germany will qualify as hosts anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter. I think Italy will should scrape should, through. Yeah. But the, the way the style that they play is so outdated. They're still playing that defensive counter attack yeah. kind of kind of performance. Now, you know, the, the world it's like the world has already passed by this kind of football already. You know, the you, you they have to attack. They will, they have to try to get away from their Cantonaccio, their defensive formations, and you know get more players willing to attack. You know, yeah. rather than defend. It, it used to be. You know, I I I, I mean last time. The, the old, old style of football, you know, you can defend, 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 then get one counter attack, you can go. But nowadays, it's very hard to play that kind of game. Yeah. No, so, I agree. Yeah. I just wanted to ask Eddie one last thing before yeah. we wrap up the international games. Kai Havertz. Yeah. What is he? <laughs> <laughs> I still can't decide. And I like the guy. He seems very hardworking. But he's doing the same for Germany that he does at club level, which is... I don't know. It's <laughs> utterly mystifying. The German supporters, they booed the team off, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they seem as mystified by Kai Havertz as the English Premier League has been mystified. He's way too versatile. By, yeah, he's a bit of a jack of all <laughs> trades, but a master no, of Absolutely none. nothing. Anyone okay, you reckon, so, you so, see him a lot. I mean, I, I love the guy. Yep. I mean, I won't, I won't lie and say that he's, he's produced his best for Arsenal so far. What I think he is, is if you look at the underlying stats, if you classed him as a midfielder, he's doing all right. Yeah. Right? It's just that, you know, he has this tag of being played as a false nine or as a attacking midfielder coming from the right from his Bayer Leverkusen days. So everyone is saying like, well, where's that guy? Mm. Um, I don't know. It seems to have been that coaches seem to trust him more. They're using him as a defensive midfielder in the attacking third. Mm. So if you think of him that way, if you look at him that way, he seems quite good. But where I don't, uh, where I don't, where, where I don't shield him from criticism, right, is yeah. that if you're in those positions, you have to score and you have to assist. Yeah. Unfortunately, he has not done that for Arsenal <laughs> so, or for Germany. So, he needs to buck up. In a word, he's got three different positions <laughs> and doesn't fit any of them. <laughs> if you know which position Kai Havertz should play, do let us know. And if Go, you think, goalkeeper, goalkeeper. Yeah, goalkeeper next for Kai Havertz. <laughs> and do you think Gareth Southgate is still the right man for the England job? Is he attack-minded enough? Send all your comments, queries, questions to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, I'm glad you've brought this up. Women's football. Oh. Not been a great week for women's football, both internationally with Spain and, you, and a bit closer to home with <clears throat> Singapore, which mm. we'll get to. Let's do the Spain one first. Rubiales, the oh. Spanish president, has finally... Finally, Finally, done what he should have done the One day after the ago. World Cup final, yeah. which is resign. resign after kissing that poor woman on the lips, Hermoso, stealing the thunder, ruining the moment for the Spanish football, women's football. He's finally gone. What did you think? Exhibit A on how not to celebrate a World Cup. I agree. <laughs> That's like, and then react accordingly and react afterwards. Accordingly, every step Everything away wrong. was a bad move, or bad PR move all the way. Yeah, it is. It is really distasteful. The, the 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 from the kiss from until he when he refused to quit uh, during the assembly, uh, the the federation assembly, until the ministers and FIFA and every everybody applied pressure. Even Hermoso wanting to charge him as a, on a criminal charge. 
And until then, finally, he's 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 finally his hands are tied. And finally, he resigns. It's just, mm. it's just an unsavory episode that takes everything that's good about Spain's Spain's women's team away from their their World Cup drum. And now he's on the Piers Morgan show. So I mean, <laughs> this is, it's just a way to make it worse, right? So I, I think that's where he resigned. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's just terrible because I I think like. You know what's sad? What's sad is that, okay, people know Hermoso's name, uh. but do they know who was the young starlet who took the world by storm in the World Cup mm. and brought them to the final with a gold parallelo? Yeah. No one knows that. You know, that's point. how sad yeah. it is. Because if he hadn't done all that, right, then people would be looking into, okay, who are the stars of this Absolutely. team? Absolutely. Mm. Right? Yeah. Who are the stars of this team? Let me go watch some highlights and all that. But instead, what are people Googling? They're Googling the what case. happened in the winning <laughs> ceremony. Yeah. And yep. that's really sad. Yep. So even besides the kids, I think if you watch the whole thing, and I watched the whole thing, right? I was watching it live. And I was like, why is this guy like hugging these women like and lifting them off the floor and everything? And I thought that kind of celebration is only if you really, really are close to them. So if you are one of the coaches and you work with them every day, I can still look past that, I think. Yeah. But yeah. for a federation president, I mean, I kind of yeah. question that. This I was so cringe. It was all cringe. It was, it was, cringe. Cringe. It was like, cringe inducing. Oh, creepy. And I think like, uh. so even aside from the, the sexual allegations and everything, even if he did that to men's players, I think it's just weird because you are like, you're like Salt Bay, you know, the guy who like yeah, goes yeah, into yeah. the ceremonies and pretends to be one of them. It's nice. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. You know, you, you're just the yeah. Federation president have some, have a bit of dignity. Yeah, yeah. No, no, dig decorum yeah. and dignity. Yeah. No, I agree with both of you. I think the, the Rubiales scandal has been a, a terrible example of misogyny from start to finish. As you said, first you've got the kiss. There was no need for it. It was a man dominating a woman, you know, physically in this case, mm. I'm going to kiss you and you're not going to be in a position to stop me. That was wrong. Even his resignation feels misogynistic. Mm. No apology. Nope. Yeah. No mention of her name. Nope. Nope. No point about the team doing this spectacular success at the World Cup. It's Nothing. all about him. And not only is it all about him, he's got this quote here that I want to get correct. He said something like, I'm stepping down because there are forces working against us. There are powers that will prevent my return. I do not want Spanish football to be harmed. What he's talking about is the men, men. the men's World Cup bid for 20, 2032. So it started off being about an oppressive man exerting his control, and it ends being about men trying to exert their control. This is all about not screwing up the men's World Cup bid. Yeah. It's misogyny from start to finish. Yeah. Terrible. And and he kind of forced the, the mother to go on a hunger strike. <laughs> to, ah. and that's, that goes into a surreal state. Really like, huh? Oh, shocking. But as always, let us know what you think yeah. in the usual places. Let's go to the Singapore women. Yeah. Now, now um, the news just come out from the mainstream media that, you know, some of the women's players, national players, uh, have uh, re sort of like asked to be taken out of the national squad. And those are key players, a former captain, mm -hmm. and then the, the key striker. Yeah. yeah. So they've been saying, they've been, they've been you know, you, you hear the, see the quotes, it's like uh, to, to, to some mental health yeah. issues that they're mm -hmm. saying. But later on in the, in the, in the Straits Times report, it, it says, it says that, you know, the, the new coach, Karim, Karim Ben Sharifa. Yeah. Who was signed? Uh, who came on board like earlier this year? Yeah, I know him. Yeah. It's a very really demanding mm. coach. Shouts a lot, you know. Maybe, maybe it is his way of trying to lift up the team. Maybe he rubbed people the wrong way. I, I, I don't know. What we've heard, yeah. It's, that's what we've heard. There's also people, but there's also Sh Shasi Kumar was also on his Twitter. He was like saying that you know it could be. They are trying to the, the 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 former captain was dropped and then she's not happy with it or something like that. There's there's some issues. But it was also just ahead of their Asian games, you know. This is their first first time they are playing in the Asian mm. games. And then this thing, this thing breaks is is a bit I, I think a bit uh uh, concerning, yeah. yeah. I mean, as you say, it's uh, it's Noah Zati Rosny, yeah, no, key attacker. Key striker. She's ruled herself out. You got forward Lila Tan. She withdrew from the national team, and yeah. as you mentioned, the former captain Ernie, Ernie Sontario yeah. has also been dropped from the squad. Three key players right on the start of the Asian Games. Terrible timing. I mean, they're players I really love. They're all from the Lion City Sailors <laughs> women's team, right? Yeah. So we watch them week in, week out, and I think it is a loss for the national team, of course. Mm. Um, but I think representing your country, if you're not in the right frame of mind, if they quote, if they cited mental health, or maybe any other reasons behind the scenes, then I think it's actually fair hmm. to the rest of the lionesses for them to focus. If they feel that they might, they themselves might not be able to contribute fully with Karim Ben Charifa 
in charge, then yeah. I think it, it's actually pretty mature and responsible mm. that they've taken this step of leaving the squad Fair so enough. that they don't actually affect the atmosphere in the team. Mm. So we don't really know what has gone on yeah. behind the scenes. If it's really mental health, then I would point to Simone Biles, you know, her, yeah. her decision to leave the gymnastics team. And also the... Yeah. The Spain's team, there were people who there were quite a few yeah. of them who left before the World Cup. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. I I I'm I think we know too little to be yep. able to comment on, on this in a meaningful way. And mm. and I, I think that that's what I will say for this. Yeah, I'll um, just add I agree with both of your points very fairly put. But I'll just add a third, which is we don't know the reasons, but what I will say is some of the abuse we continue to see online, and I don't know if this is a reason, it may not be a reason, but it certainly doesn't help yeah. the men and the women's game, our keyboard warriors. Oh. It just I, I, I see some of the comments. I've seen some against us, by us, the way. Yeah. Just this last week, we've had some shocking abuse. And I, I'm big enough and ugly enough. It's part of the territory. I take it, <laughs> yeah. right? But I do wonder the thought process sometimes. Yeah. Are the folks sitting there in front of their phones or their laptops thinking, I'm going to abuse this footballer, this female footballer, this male they have footballer. The, they have the anonymity. and then uh, Yeah, but what do they honestly think they're going to achieve yeah. by doing it, by knocking down? Look, you take it. You miss an open goal you're going to get it right you get a silly red card you're going to get it but i think sometimes some of our abuse for our young boys and girls who if nothing else are playing mm. at the very least yeah. that's always my fallback position right yeah. yes at least they're playing constructive yeah. criticism is fair but at yeah. least they're out there playing in a population of five million when you can count on two hands two hands the amount of kids are playing at that elite level at least they're playing some of the abuse for me yeah, too much. Too much. I, I think we all have a part to play, though. So, for example, I mean, I'll use an example of a, a fat footballer, for example. So, there will be people in the comments who go, he's so fat, he doesn't even look like he can run a 2.4 km. Mm. And, I, and I think, you know, why people do that is because, I mean, they feel a bit of superiority, I guess. And also, how all of us can play a part is if you see a comment like this, please do not like it. Please do not yeah. upvote it. Even if it's even if you think it's the wittiest thing ever, yeah. like it's a very good pun. The, yeah. Like if it's a very good pun, just resist it. You know, you shouldn't be encouraging this kind of behavior. No, I agree. I once in a while I foolishly reply, and I shouldn't, because once you reply, it goes on and on yeah. and on and on. The only one that really offended me this week, really offended me. Someone call me Australian. Oh no! Now, I'll, I'll, I'll take anything. Oh, no. I'll, I'll take anything. Lousy writer. Oh, I'm no, more you don't North never North call him Australian. Go back never to your own North country, North country. Angmore. What do you know about local football? I've heard it all. But the, call, don't call me yeah. Australian. That's Come the worst. On. That's the there worst. There has to be a line in the sand, mate. Good day, mate. All right. So yes, let's be nicer. Let's yeah, be, be nicer, nicer yeah. to our footballers. If we always can. we always advocate to be nicer. Yeah, okay? exactly. Right. Let's move on. Positive news. EPL back this weekend. Oh, finally. Three big games: Everton, Arsenal, West Ham. Man City, Man U, Brighton. What do you want to do? You want to do your Arsenal first? What do you think? Sure. I, I think um, on paper it's a it's a it's a game that Arsenal should should win comfortably, mm. but that's not the Arsenal way. So I think we will <laughs> scrape a two one maybe. Mm. You know, I think Everton. Come on, beat them five 0 please. If you can't beat Everton at the moment, you don't deserve <laughs> that five nil, rice. Please. You don't deserve to be in the title talk. Come on, what's the conservatism? I, I will be supporting you every week. Okay, okay. Heavens will score. He wants him to go down. <laughs> if you want an outlandish prediction, Heavens are two goals. Yes. <laughs> I want to see thousands of philosophy students at Arsenal going. What is Havertz? <laughs> Who is Havertz? <laughs> what is Havertz? <laughs> All right, I agree West with that. West End. Yeah, there's one team at the moment. It is, of course, West Ham. They are the template of how a football club should be run at the moment. <laughs> really? They're yeah. playing Man City. Uh, what do we think? Well, I, I, it's I, obviously, City, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> by, by, by hoping for a 1-1 one, draw, that's, that, that'll be a okay result for the other challenger. What about you? <laughs> I, just for the fun of it, I think West Ham at home, David Moyes parked the bus, could frustrate them yeah. if they manage to keep the big fella quiet. Might be a draw. Yeah. Might be a one-one well, draw. Cool. No Kevin De Bruyne. No. Yeah. Anything yeah. can happen. What do you think? Yeah. No, I think Man City's going to win. Fair enough. All right. Last but, one. Go on. I think this this Man U versus Brighton will be the most important Absolutely match. Absolutely agree. Because cool. Man U would not want to lose after losing to Arsenal mm. before the international break. So this one they'd ha definitely have to win. Otherwise, everything will be piled up on Eric and Hart. Yeah, I agree. The Jadon Sancho situation is still Anthony. Yeah, up there. Anthony situation, and then if they lose again. Oh, hmm. and but Brighton is not a not not an easy opponent. No. Yeah. Like they they are the, probably one of the most dangerous clubs if you do underestimate them. Yeah, and you and you know the yeah. narrative already. The narrative is 
Brighton is how you run a club, and Man U is literally how you don't run a club. Yeah. I mean, Brighton buys cheap, sells high. Yeah. Man U buys high, sells cheap. Yeah. They are the complete opposite of how to run a football yeah. club. So the narrative is obvious. Uh, and I hope Evan Ferguson scores again. Yeah, you know? What do you think? That, and tell you what, yeah, last week I said he looks like Wayne Rooney. Apparently Wayne Rooney is his idol. There you go. Oh, there see, you go. heard there it you here go. first. <clears throat> Hunky Ong said it first. You see, you? you see the headlines, man. Ferguson masterclass at Old Trafford. Oh, yes. 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 Uh, but but no, actually, I, I think it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a draw. I, I don't think like I think Brighton. Some matches I see right, they still seem to have this kind of like I don't call it stage fright. It's more of a oh no, what well, is a bit of an identity crisis. Are we a, are we supposed to be coming? You know, the, um, are we supposed to be stepping up to the level of these yeah, like enough. juggernauts mm-hmm. yeah. of the English game? There'll be games like that. Like. So there will be games like that and there mm. will be games where the class will really tell. I think Man City did that to them. Mm. But Man United, I mean, I have some sympathy for that. Okay, I can't say that it was a straight face. <laughs> I have, I, it's in a mess now. And I, you know, the Sancho, Anthony, Greenwood, even everyone. Yeah. Very hard club <laughs> to like at the moment. A lot of bad news around them. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe this kind of siege mentality will propel them to a result against Brighton. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on the first point. I think a draw. I think a draw, but that's as good as a defeat for Man U at the yeah. moment because it will just snowball the criticism. What do you think? I'm hoping a 1-0 Brighton win. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. see. He's not biased at all, we'll is see. he? We'll very but let us know what you very think. Biased. Send all of your predictions and comments about this show to... Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube. Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter. Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Thanks as always for watching. Thanks for coming in, Eddie. Hey, no worries, man. And cool. thank you for all of your comments. Without you, this show is nothing and we wouldn't have a sponsor, but we do. Star Hub, one, one more time. Premium Plus package. Sign up and you get a one year free for broadband. But it's, it's, coming, it's coming to an end soon, so hurry up. Fantastic. Yeah. And what is also coming very soon, Segway. Segway. <laughs> Part two of this wonderful podcast where we get stuck into Singapore football, including his boys, the Lion City Sailors, on their Asian escapade. So do come back for part two. As always, thank you for watching. See you soon. Who is Kai Havertz? <laughs>